can you explain the Lightning Network and how payment channels and locked funds work? Yes. Let's start with payment channels. What payment channels are, are transactions on the Bitcoin network that lock funds into a two-of-two multi-signature address. If I have a payment channel with Alice, and that payment channel has funds locked, so that I commit a certain number of funds in the balance of the channel, let's say I put in one Bitcoin, and Alice puts in one Bitcoin, and we both commit those into a two-of-two multi-sig, where both of us have to sign to release these funds. Now, once we have those, what we can do is we can sign a transaction that changes that balance. So that what we do is we can sign a transaction whereby I uh, reduce my balance in the channel to 0.9 Bitcoin, and I increase Alice's transaction balance to 1.1. And we do that by simply updating that multi-signature with a new transaction that is signed that updates the balance in the channel. Now that's a payment channel because we don't actually transmit that transaction to anyone else. We just hold on to it. So once we've locked the funds into the payment channel, we can now write a transaction to each other. And this is a real Bitcoin transaction. And what this transaction does is it's like a final closing transaction with a new updated balance. So I say, okay, great. I used to own one Bitcoin in this channel, and Alice used to own one, but I'm going to sign a transaction that Alice could cash in the future that actually gives her 1.1 Bitcoin and returns 0.9 to me from this multi-signature address. And I'm going to sign it and give it to Alice. Now, Alice could sign it and cash it, at which point she gets 1.1 Bitcoin and I get 0.9, or she can just hold on to it and then wait. Now, if I want to do another transaction, I could sign another transaction that reduces my balance to 0.8 and increases Alice's to 1.2. I sign it, I give it to Alice. Now, Alice has a transaction that has a new balance. Now, if she took that transaction and actually cashed it, she would get 1.2 Bitcoin. I would get change 0.8 Bitcoin. And effectively, we've now transferred um, 0.2 Bitcoin total to Alice. But what if Alice now wants to pay me back some money? So Alice writes a transaction that changes the balance back to 0.9 to me, 1.1 to Alice. And effectively, now Alice has sent me 0.1 Bitcoin in the opposite direction, Alice to me, and I just hold on to it. And back and forth we go, signing and sending each other these transactions. Anytime we want, one of us or both of us collaboratively could sign the last transaction we have, which is the accurate up-to-date balance of our tab, um, tab in the, um, in the meaning of how you keep track uh, of a credit, like you would when you're holding, uh, buying drinks from a bar and you don't sign the credit card until the end of the night, you just keep track of how many drinks you have. And that would effectively um, close the channel when we sign the last transaction, commit it, and update the balance. There's a few complexities in there, which are for security reasons. Now, obviously, I want to have some protection so that Alice can't sign an older transaction, which gives her a better balance. And there's a couple of ways to get around that. Um, there's a mechanism that has a penalty built in, where if Alice tries to cheat by signing an older transaction, that transaction also contains a script within it that allows me to take back all of the money from the channel. Um, and because that's the only transaction I have signed and given to her, the one that has the penalty for misuse, um, she can't sign it prematurely without my agreement, um, because I will penalize her by taking all of the money in the channel. Uh, that tit for tat, as it's called, mechanism, game theory mechanism, is one of the security mechanisms. There are other mechanisms that could be used in Lightning uh, networks. Uh, one of them is called L2, which uses a different formulation, but that's the basic idea. Now, great, that's a payment channel. Effectively, we lock some funds into a common credit amount, into a multi-sig address. And then we exchange signed transactions that we don't transmit to the Bitcoin network, 
updating the balance between us um, in order to reflect payments that we're sending to each other. Um, and then at the end, when we're done sending payments to each other, or maybe never, we can then take the last transaction, sign it, and close the channel. That's one payment channel. But what's interesting is when you can take lots of payment channels and link them together. So effectively, what the Lightning Network is, is taking that bidirectional payment channel that I have with Alice and linking it to another bidirectional payment channel that, say, Alice has with Carol, so that I make a commitment to pay Alice only if Alice pays Carol. And as a result, I've paid Carol uh, through Alice. And uh, that's done through the exchange of a series of transactions uh, that are called hash time lock contracts, or HTLCs. It's rather complicated, uh, but basically we use um, Alice as an intermediary. And um, if I commit funds to Alice and Alice commits funds to Carol, that's as if I committed funds to Carol. And these payment channels can, can be um, of quite significant length. You can have multiple hops of commitments. And then as soon as Carol is satisfied that she has a commitment from Alice, she can signal that back to me. So I release my commitment to Alice. Alice releases her commitment to Carol and everybody gets paid. And most importantly, in all of these formulations, the system is designed so that no one can cheat. So that Alice doesn't get paid unless Carol has already been paid. So it's only once her commitment to Carol has been made that my commitment to her will be made. And that way we have security. We don't have to trust each other. Um, and if anybody disappears from the network, we can all get refunds um, of all of the funds that we've locked up into these commitments. And of course, because this isn't transmitted to the Bitcoin network, even though it is a Bitcoin transaction, the only times you use it as a live Bitcoin transaction on the network is if there is a breakdown in the channel, whereby somebody disappears uh, or somebody tries to cheat. And then you take the last valid transaction you have and you send that to the Bitcoin network. It's a valid Bitcoin transaction. And that way you get your money back or you punish the cheater or you close the channel and you can't be uh, cheated. So effectively, you're using the Bitcoin blockchain to provide the security. And you're using the Bitcoin blockchain to be almost like a court. Uh, and just like you don't take every contract you ever made to court, you only take a contract to court if there's been an attempt to cheat you. Um, in Lightning Network, the vast majority hundreds of thousands of transactions can happen without any problems because everybody knows that if they attempt to cheat, if they disappear from the network, or if anything goes wrong in the Lightning Channel, any one of the participants can take one of these already signed valid Bitcoin transactions, cash it in the court of the Bitcoin blockchain, and become whole. Um, and if you know that someone can cash this transaction if you cheat, you don't cheat, uh, especially if there's a penalty included in the transaction that will cost you. So that's how Lightning Network works. Um, there's another question, which is, is Lightning Network a sidechain? And, and the answer is no, it's not a sidechain. Lightning Network is an overlay network. It's basically a series of smart contracts that operate within Bitcoin that allow you to do hundreds and hundreds of thousands of offline transactions that nobody sees other than you and the other recipients um, in a way that's very, very private, very, very fast, with very, very low cost. Um, and the capacity of the Bitcoin network is only used to open and close channels, um, which doesn't need to happen very often, and therefore you can scale um, the core Bitcoin blockchain to a much greater degree. It's only used as the judge. Do these payment channels face scaling problems if they're heavily loaded with transactions? Not really. The amount of computation you need to do to calculate what's called a hash time-locked contract and to route that over the internet is such that 
if you put two lightning nodes uh, on a well-connected network and you start exchanging transactions between them as fast as possible, uh, you can literally do hundreds of thousands of transactions per second. Um, and because those transactions are only seen by those two nodes, there could be another two nodes right next to them doing 100,000 transactions per second. And there could be another 100,000 nodes each doing 100,000 transactions per second to each other. Um, and all of this doesn't really affect the rest of the network. So it decentralizes the scaling in a way that makes um, Lightning Network not only much more private, because these transactions on these payment channels are not seen by anyone other than the participating node, um, much harder to censor because you don't need um, to get it to a miner, and um, also uh, much, much faster and lower cost. Guess that um, in order to be Lightning compatible, each chain must execute SegWit correct not really. Um, you could do uh, Lightning without SegWit. It's just a hell of a lot more complicated because of the transaction malleability bug. Uh, both chains have to have a transaction malleability fix. It doesn't have to be SegWit, however. It could be a different transaction malleability fix, um, but it's very, very difficult to implement Lightning securely on a chain that has a transaction malleability problem and that needs to be fixed. SegWit fixes it on Bitcoin and Litecoin. Um, it, it, on another chain, you might have a different fix, and that would make it possible. Is Lightning Network also for altcoins? That's a great, great question. Um, yes, Lightning Network can run on any blockchain system that has certain fundamental capabilities. It must have the ability to do multisig. It must have the ability to do time locks. And if it has the ability to do those two things, you can probably set up uh, a Lightning node that's in compliance uh, with the current Lightning Network specifications, which are called BOLT, uh, Basics of Lightning Transactions, BOLT. Um, and the BOLT specifications are not specific to Bitcoin. In fact, already the Lightning Network operates on both Bitcoin and Litecoin simultaneously. Here's the really amazing thing. You can send uh, a Lightning payment in Bitcoin, have it transmitted across the Lightning Network, have a node, intermediate node, somewhere in the middle, simply exchange it so that one payment channel comes in on Bitcoin, the other payment channel through that node goes out on, say, Litecoin, and the recipient gets Litecoin, you sent Bitcoin. Effectively, Lightning Network is not just portable to other blockchains, but it can run multiple currencies simultaneously, where even a single payment can involve exchanging for other currencies, and not just once. You could exchange three different currencies in a single payment and route them across the Lightning Network. Who keeps Lightning nodes? Um, I'm running a Lightning node. You can run a Lightning node. The requirements to run a Lightning node are fairly light. In fact, if you're already running a Bitcoin node, the adding a Lightning node to it is very, very easy. It takes very few additional resources. And the incentives are that if you decide to route payments, you make a tiny, tiny fee for each payment you route. If you run a Lightning node full time, you'll probably make a few cents per month. It's very, very cheap, but also it's very, very easy um, to run. And it's usable across the borderless global internet, which means that these Lightning payments can be transmitted all around the world. The Lightning payment channels cross network boundaries. Um, there's no limitation as to where geographically a Lightning node can be, and a payment can be routed globally in a matter of seconds or even milliseconds across the internet. Finally, at this stage, fascinating things about Lightning is we're um, beginning to uh, we're beginning to track and look at the size of the Lightning network growing. So as nodes are added, they advertise their presence and they advertise the channels they have open and they advertise how much capacity those channels have. 
but some nodes don't advertise their presence and some nodes don't advertise their channels to anyone other than the other part of that channel. So you can have kind of secret channels on Lightning. The bigger the Lightning network gets, the harder it is for us to see how big it is. Um, it becomes more and more invisible. And because on the Lightning network, all transactions are routed, encrypted through this onion routed uh, topology, where each node doesn't know where the payment is coming or where it's going. The bigger it grows, the more private it gets, the less we know about where payments are going, the less we know about how many payments are happening. And gradually it becomes harder and harder to collect statistics. Uh, the, the funny thing is that over time, we will gain less visibility into Lightning. We'll know it's out there and lots of things are happening on it, but the level of privacy is such that we'll know less and less and less about it.